Alrighty, so there seem to have been some difficulties with uploading my last demo video, so I'm going to do a quick shortened one um, so you can kind of see how I go about doing this project. So uh, for your torn paper collage project, all right, so you should have some magazines. It doesn't matter really what kind of magazines because you can kind of make do with a lot of different ones. Um, the biggest thing is trying to have color. All right, um, so what I did was I, you pick a magazine and you flip through, this is kind of your first step, and you look for the colors that you need throughout your project. So I need grays, I need whites, I need light blues, yellows, blacks, blues, and you just flip through until you see colors that are similar or they are that color. So you can see I took out some big chunks of this green, um, it does not have to be perfect. It's just to get the general idea. So um, try not to get too distracted by uh, looking at the pictures because I know that can be distracting. But go through, flip through. I like to go page by page. Um, make sure that you're looking for different textures so you can kind of see in um, my whites here. right? So I found these walls. I found like this is on a lamp but it's all still the same general color. So um, just different textures kind of help add to the, to the life of your project. Okay, so making sure that we're doing that. And then I like to go through and sort out my colors kind of again or into general piles as to what color they are. Um, the piles are really like this green should cover, I mean, basically all the ground that I have showing. Um, it might, and it should get me through actually a lot of my trees as well. So this is kind of, um, you have to keep in mind that you don't need a ton because if you look at this piece of green right here, this big one, I mean that covers more than enough for this entire side. And when you have all these other pieces, I mean this really should cover just about everything. And with the different techniques and layouts, you'll be surprised at how little you need. But you want a good sized pile because it makes making the actual project a lot easier. So uh, when you start with your project, you start with any of the background areas. Okay, so I like to start with my sky and then kind of work my way forward. Um, but then you also want to start with the general area and then go through and add details. So like when I get to my road, for example, okay, the black are these big chunked areas. So I would go through and I would do the black and then go through and do the detailed lines. I will leave a gap like you can see up here with my sky. I left this uh, gap here uh, for my white cloud because I was doing the sky around it first and then I will add that and then the mountains will actually go in front of the cloud. So you kind of work your way forward and it, that makes these details a lot easier. So I will do my ground and then I'll go through and do my trees. So uh, just a little tip with that. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of get started. I'm gonna show you first on how um, I mixed colors because there are certain colors that you will find that are gonna be a little bit more difficult to find than others. So like the, this entire area is this light blue. Well, to find a bunch of the same light blue or very similar is going to be very difficult. So think about how you can use different colors to kind of blend in order to create the color that you need. So um, like you can see that I used this medium blue a little bit in here and then I used another light blue that was a little bit darker and I even used some white because all those colors together create more of a light blue. Um, and then I went through and I actually had a very small amount of this light blue that I really do like um, that I wish I could cover my entire thing with but I have enough of those that I can tell that this area is supposed to be a light blue. So I'm gonna have my colors here kind of ready to work with all right, and then all you do is everywhere that you end up gluing, you just glue a little section. And I kind of, I actually like to flatten it out quite a bit because then I'm not having to use as much glue. And you're just going to be filling in the space. So now essentially you're coloring. It's like you're coloring a coloring book, um, but instead you're doing this with magazine pieces. So 
I don't want a ton of these because I don't want it to look like a dark blue. I just like the accent color that it brings in. And so I focus on overlapping all my pieces. And I like to just start with one color and spread them out. Now if you look, I like to, you know, I'll grab it, grab as much fits in between my fingers, and that's all I'm using. Small pieces. If you're going too big with them, it actually takes away from the project and it looks more and more like a kindergartner did it. <laughs> Which is nothing wrong if you're a kindergartner, but <laughs> when you get older, you want to make sure that you're using those smaller pieces. It's just that higher quality. Um, now if I have pieces that are kind of sticking up at all, I just kind of gently tap them down. And I'm going to go through with my next darkest. And right now I'm just creating a base color. So I got my light blues. I have a few darker blues just because they're easier to find. That should get me a pretty good base. Now you can even see that this looks darker than this side. So let's stick another one up here. All right. And then I'm going to go through with a little bit of white, kind of lighten it up. And I actually found this white that has kind of gray touches in it, which I think add to that light blue effect. And I'm really focusing on overlapping those other darker blues because I don't want to see them entirely. I do want to see them a little bit. They should be peeking through. But the focus of this area is supposed to be light blue. So if I'm seeing more white with more accents of those other blues, it's going to come across as being a light blue. Now you'll see when I'm done with all this that even like my ground, you can do this even if it just doesn't have to be a light blue or whatever. Um, like my green grass or whatever my green ground <laughs> you want to call it, um, I actually will probably do something similar um, just because it does create that interest. You can see that in my dark blue areas, while they're all dark blues, they're different types of dark blues because I'm still doing the same process of having different types of them. Different types of dark blue means more interest. Now I can see that this doesn't quite fill up the space as much as I had hoped it would but I have most of it filled in. So right now, I probably would actually let this dry and then I would go back in and uh, add in more pieces later on. So I'm gonna, I'll go find pieces and then I'll add them in. But I got a lot of it covered. So then what I like to do is kind of seal in what I did. Just do, I'm not really squeezing any of the glue, but I just kind of dab just a little bit and then I just gently tap on top of the paper because it seems to create this little seal and it helps hold down all those pieces so that they don't curl up and it just makes it a more solid, high quality artwork. Okay? So that's kind of the general process. No matter if it's a solid color, if you're trying to blend colors, whatnot. Uh, but like, I want you to look. Okay, my dark blue, like I said, I have different types of dark blue, but I started with one and I kind of spread them out. Then I went with another, then I spread them out. Then I went with another, spread them out. And it's just that consistent process. And no matter which section you're working on, you want to make sure that you're doing that. All right? So for cleanup, 
Um, so I always try to keep all my pieces together. If that means you need a Ziploc, grab a Ziploc, make yourself a little folder, whatever. Um, but always make sure that you are shutting your glue. If you're leaving it open like this, it's uh, glue is more likely to get dried inside of here, which means it has to gum up, and then you have to use a pin to actually get that glue out and unclog it. So you always want to make sure that you're shutting it entirely. I always try to clean off the end. Um, just I just think it makes it easier the next time. And then if you have any extra glue on your fingers, if you rub them together, you can kind of see they start to gum up a little bit. And then you just keep rubbing. And then it creates almost like those e eraser shavings. And then I just I sweep those on the floor. All right, and then you want to make sure that you're letting this dry without anything on top of it because of all the glue, things will probably dry to it. So uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, but otherwise, this is kind of the general process that you'll do throughout the entire thing. Um, I'll keep working on mine, and you'll post a weekly update. This is probably as far as you would get um, in one class period. So this is what I'm expecting weekly progress photos of. So just keep that in mind. Start with the background, work your way forward, blend colors. Don't try and get it to be too matchy-matchy. Have fun with it. If you screw up, if you decide you don't like this color here or you find a better color, you just keep gluing more on top and eventually it'll work out. So you can do this. Good luck. Let me know if you have questions.